Hello and welcome to a new video and this is kind of tangentially Christmas themed ish. It's more winter themed I guess will be the word. In this video we're going to make a very basic, very straightforward, very simple, very quick low poly snow shader or snow system almost. It's almost the complete snow weather system ish and when I say low poly it's only because we're not employing textures. So the asset that you can see on screen is this asset pack. There'll be a link to it obviously in the description below. It's a cool little asset pack. This one's like I guess a taster because there's some asset packs by the same people people with more in them that cost money. I would argue that it's worth it from what I can see here. So let's go ahead and create a scripts folder and then immediately create something that is not a script. We need a surface shader, standard surface shader, which we're just going to call snow shader. This is largely going to be the shader that we're using. We're just going to make a few little tweaks and changes to it. So the first one is that we want to go to our input struct here and we're going to need the world normal value. So if we just put float three world normal and I've, I've pointed this out in other videos, but I don't expect everyone to have watched all of my videos. So world normal is crucial for this. It has to be called world normal capitalized like that in order for it to get the right value that we want. And then if we go up to the top to our properties, we need a snow color. That is a of type color. And by default, that's going to equal 11111, which is white. And that is as it sounds a snow color so if you wanted to have a slightly different tint of snow or you wanted to use this shader for something completely different to snow you would change that color and then we need to go down here and we need to add these so first off fix sorry fixed for snow color and it needs to be exactly the same as you called it up here because you won't get an error until you try and run it you don't get any syntax correction in here and then we need a second value and this one's going to be called float snow level now we can't put this one in the property drawer because we're going to need to change this one from script and if there is a value in the property drawer then it the property drawer value overrides whatever we try and set it as in the uh, in the script so basically this one has to remain hidden now if we go down to our surf function and then what we want here is we want to create a new value which we're going to call fixed s s for snow and it's going to equal snow color times in dot world normal dot y so we're timesing it by the the y axis and then we're going to times that by snow level and then down here where we've got albedo equals c dot rgb so c is getting its value from whatever the texture is so that's the color that c is currently equaling all we're going to do is add s dot rgb to it so because we haven't set any values yet, when we apply this to our text, to our models, oh, we've got an error. That's because I just put that as fixed and not fixed for. There we go. So when we apply this to our models, we're going to find that it is immediately snowy because we can't set this value. So if we go to our asset pack and we find our materials and we've got a cloud material, a sky material, and then a material material, and that's the one we want to change. So if we set that to our custom snow shader, as you can see, everything is immediately snowy. So what's what we've done basically is we've told it that the more straight up something is facing, the more snow it's going to have on it. So as you can see, these mountains in the distance aren't completely white because they're not facing straight up. Whereas the ground, which is facing straight up, is completely white over. So that's how we get our snow our very simple snow effect obviously you can spend a lot more time on this and you can make it look a lot more realistic but we're doing a low poly thing here and this is good enough for what we're doing right now and that to me at least is enough to give us a decent snow effect especially for a low poly level like this so now let's make it so that we can adjust that level so we'll go back to our scripts folder and put an actual script in here so we'll call this one we we'll just call it snow, I guess. Nice and straightforward. And it doesn't really matter where we put this one. So for now, I'm just going to put it on the camera because it's really not important where we put it. So in here, we're going to have a ranged value. I've got these values from messing around with this a little bit. Feel free to mess around even more to get something that works for you. So range is from 0.01 to 0.1. And then the value is public float snow cover speed. Clearly a very good typing day today. And then we also need another float called value, which is going to equal zero by default. And then we'll get an update function. And we're going to say if value is less than one, it needs to be one because that's the maximum value that we can apply our snow to. Anything above that and it's just overexposing. It's not really going to show anything. And we're going to say shader.set global float 
snow level and again this needs to exactly match whatever you've called this value in uh, sorry this value here because if it doesn't exactly match it you just you, nothing will happen you won't, I don't even know if you'll get an error for that one it might just not do anything and then we're setting the value and then we're going to say value plus equals time dot delta time times snow cover speed so the time dot delta time ensures that our rate is in sync with the frame rate and then the snow cover speed makes it faster or slower depending on what we set this value to. So now if we go in here and we load up the main camera we should see we have a slider. So if I set that all the way to 0 0.1 and we press play now you can see it's slowly getting whiter. And at some point it's going to top out and that will be our snowy scene. Great. Just to be sure that everything is going to be not snowy when we start, we'll get a start value and we'll just copy this line here and just set that to zero. Because shortly we're going to change this slightly so that it doesn't start snowing until we tell it to. So we want it to be not snowy to start with. But now let's get to the fun bit. So we're going to go into our create, go into effects and we want to create a new particle system. Um, we're going to push it. First off, we're going to reset the rotation because for some reason it faces sideways by default and then we're going to position it about I think 50 is good about 50 and broadly over the center of this little village that should do now if we go into our I think shape is it no yeah shape we want to set to box and then for size I'm going to set this to 50 1 and 50 so that's like 50 wide 50 deep and then one tall i'm going to set the start speed to zero so as you can see that stops them moving but then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to velocity over lifetime here and turn that on and then we're going to set this top value here it's currently set to constant we're going to set it to random between two constants and then the value that we're going to give it here is minus 0 0.5 and then the second value is 0 0.5 and then we're going to go for the y value minus 0 0.8 to minus I think 2.2 these are val feel free to mess around with these values and then this one again minus 0 0.5 and 0.5 so if you haven't already clicked it this is the velocity that these snowflakes are falling at so if you made this value higher the snowflakes would fall faster if you made the x that's the y value if you made the x and the z value higher or further apart they would wobble around more so if you were going to go for like a blizzard effect you'd want to really be bumping up the x and z values so if i'll just quickly show you if i make these three uh, minus three even minus three to three minus three to three as you can see they're flopping about a lot more now so that would be great if you were doing a snowstorm type thing so anyway mess around with those values so go up to the top here and we want start lifetime i'm gonna make that 15 so that gives the snowflakes more chance to get to the ground before they disappear and then we want to find the size which is in here somewhere start size and we're going to do the random between two constants again and the two constants are going to be for me at least again play with it and get it to look how you want to look they're going to be 0.1 and 0.4 make it look a bit more snow like and I can see we've basically got our snow system I mean it's it's not perfect but it's identifiably snow so let's make it a little bit more snow like so the first thing we'll do is we want to go to a mission and we want to change this rate over time now the rate over time is as you'll see when I increase it is the amount of snowflakes we get so the higher this is the more snowflakes I found 250 to be a decent value but the problem we get here is if you see here this max particles 1000 we've already topped out at those 1000 particles that's this value here 1000 particles but the problem there is that it kind of creates this wave effect you see how there's like a batch of them falling now because we've reached the maximum particles it's not going to drop anymore until some start disappearing and obviously that's that's not a great effect so the way we can do that is increasing this i'm going to just put 5000 that's way more than i need and now we can get all the snow particles falling and the one final tweak I want to make to our snow system is if we go down to render, I think it's called, or rendering down here somewhere, right at the bottom there, uh, go into renderer and we want to change the max particle size. So what the max particle size is, is the maximum size the particle can be on the screen. So right now, as you can see, these snowflakes, when they get close to the camera, they're quite large. So we can change this. I'm going to go with 0 0.05. That means that even when they're very close to the camera, they're not going to be that big. And obviously you can make it more small. You can make it 0.1. Again, these are values that you can play around with. And now that we've done that, 
Let's go back into our snow shader and we'll just change the code a little bit so that we can make a, a scene out of it. So we're gonna add a bull, start snowing. It's gonna equal false by default. And then in here, we're only gonna do this if start snowing is true. So if start snowing and value is less than one. And the way we're gonna know that is by if input dot get key down key code dot space starts knowing equals true and then if we just go to particle system and at the top here there's a pre warm value and that basically what that does is that sets it so that it starts one loop into the animation so if we press play now we can see we've got our snow already falling and if I press space bar the snow starts to settle. And in what could well be one of my shortest videos to date, that is it. So um, yeah, this is just intended to be a fun little quick video before Christmas. I don't intend for there to be a break in the videos. I'm not taking a week off or anything over Christmas. So hopefully there will be a video next week as normal, even though it is Christmas week. So uh, I'll leave you with a, a nice snow scene. But before that, I'd just like to say thank you to my amazing Patreons. You guys are, as I've just mentioned, amazing. A special thanks to Professor DJ, of course, for being one of the top Patreons. And thank you everyone who sent leaves comments, leaves likes, anyone who's subscribed over the past year this is like I at the start of this year I think I had about 50 subscribers so it's uh, amazing <laughs> I know I keep saying that word but the fact that I have over 1500 subscribers now is a bit of a mind blower so uh, I'm very grateful to all my subscribers I'm very grateful to everyone who leaves comments who likes videos who drops suggestions talks in the discord server anything like that you're all great and for those of you that celebrate Christmas have a great Christmas for those of you that don't have a great week anyway and I will see you after Christmas Bye-bye.